again. Right, hello everybody. Um, I'm Dawn as introduced by Tendai. I'm going to be covering three key topics, R35, which is a very hot topic of late, uh, business startups and um, the financial accounting or financial statements side of things. Right, so in terms of R35, that has impacted a lot of um, our um, colleagues in the health sector because it's sent a lot of shockwaves to them because most people had set up limited companies and were working as self-employed individuals to their limited companies. And all of a sudden, Mr. Sunak has pulled the plug in now and said, well, unfortunately, IR35 will now start applying to private to the private sector. It's always applied to the um, public sector, but that he has now widened the remit to include the public, uh, the private sector. But obviously, on the private sector type uh, side of things, it's only covering the large and the medium-sized uh, companies. It's not covering the small companies for now. So those that are working for small companies, for instance, uh, family run um, a nursing home or um, family run very small organizations that have that are below the thresholds that have been set of um, 10 million, 10.4 million or less in terms of turnover or 5.2 million or less in terms of um, the balance sheet total or less than 50 employees, then those are outside the R35 rules. But anybody in terms of large or medium sized uh, clients in the private sector, they now fall within I-35 and Mr. Sunak is wanting everybody to be paying their taxes and their NI contributions in real time. So obviously you cannot then directly work through a limited company and not pay any taxes. You have to be um, registered to be paying taxes and for them to see it going through um, the kind of the HMIC payroll side of things every single month at least. So what I've done is I have set up uh, an umbrella company to be able to help people that have been working through their limited company. Uh, so I'm going to be providing the umbrella service type of uh, umbrella service um, to, indivi to individuals where obviously we're an intermediary with, between the agency and your limited company or an agency and yourself. Uh, and we charge a fixed fee to be able to process your payroll. Um, uh, obviously, there are benefits to what he's trying to do because some people, once they left their full-time um, employment that they had instead of their limited companies, some people have never set, paid any national insurance contributions. And obviously, that will impact you when you start um, wanting to claim pension. I know when you're still fit and well and you can still work and, you, and you're earning a lot of money, that is irrelevant for most young people at this very present moment. But it's when you retire, not everybody has kind of planned for the future that well, things could change as we've seen certain companies, for instance, are going bust, are going bankrupt. So things change. Life is very volatile, to be quite honest. So obviously that pension, that state pension is important, but obviously that's now based on the contributions. So if you've missed out maybe seven years or 10 years of your contributions, that is a lot in terms in terms of impacting you later on in life. Um, I know for said you can still contribute some um, for some years, but you can't go back that far to 10 years. So you can't make all those contributions in one go anymore. Um, I know some people have been paying into a private pension, but not everybody as well has been doing that. Most people have just been enjoying the, the large amounts of money that they've been receiving working through their limited company and have not been preparing for their future as what has been discussed here. Um, as well as in addition to that, obviously most people are concerned, cannot understand what the difference is between um, working for an umbrella company and then going directly with the agency. When you go with the agency directly and you pay, uh, do pays you earn directly with them, you are um, going for most agencies are charging a lower rate um, because obviously they need to cover the employer national insurance contribution. So there's, some of them are not maintaining the rate. Some of them are, some of them are not. So obviously everybody's operating the system differently because it's impacted everybody from the 6th of April and everybody's still trying to come to terms with everything in terms of how it works. Obviously, um, HM, HMRC are not very keen about umbrella companies, but as long as the umbrella company is complying with the uh, HMRC tax rules, they're happy with them in terms of making sure that people are paying their taxes and the national insurance contributions, then that's not a great, uh, that's not an issue. They are not very keen on umbrella companies like we've known where most people are getting um, bulk of the amount of money in a loan because that's what they call a benefiting kind and some of them were not being declared so the taxman was missing out on money so that is what caused a lot of 
uh, uphill and a lot of upset with HMRC and umbrella companies is because most were receiving loans and these loans were never being accounted for, no taxes were being paid. Um, then the next topic I had was the business startups. I'm very keen on business startups because um, most people out there have got ideas, they've got visions, they've got dreams, but it's just that fear that we have, that false evidence that appears real, that it's not achievable, it's not doable. It is achievable, it is doable. Um, because what they say is action cures fear. I always believe that if you've got an idea, a vision or a dream, once you start penning it down, putting it down on paper, it then you can see it starts flowing. Even if somebody's writing a book, they have to start documenting it down because you can't write a book in your head to be quite honest. So you have an idea, you have a vision, you have a dream. Take a piece of paper, start writing and just see how the ideas start to flow. And then obviously from there, take advantage of your idea, do some research and it's to refine that idea to kind of, because for instance, an idea could be that large, but you want to refine it and make sure you're clear in terms of which direction you're going. Then as I said, document it, because once you start documenting it, you're putting it down on paper and you're not losing out on any ideas and you're clear, you're clearing the path of what you want to do. Um, obviously that documentation, if you're doing, if it's a business, it's more or less then that will lead you to documenting a business plan. And I'm here to help people that want to set up a business, they've had an idea, but they've never been, uh, either it's just the fear or it's the confidence, or they just think it won't happen. Or you could be the next Bezos, who knows? Why are you underestimating yourself? For that idea to come into your head, there's a reason and the purpose for it. Make the most of it, make the most of the hay while the sun is still shining. Um, as they always say, the graveyard is the richest place on earth because most people thought they had time on their side to put their ideas or their vision, their dream out there but time was taken away from them as they were still pondering about that idea. And don't be one of those, make the most of it. And obviously, once you've documented it, then we start looking, okay, then what's your strategy? Where do you wanna be in the next five years? How, what's your forward looking? What's your, what your vision? What's your view about what you wanna do about your idea? Um, and then from there, I'm also there to, help, to support with the cash flow. Most business ideas or visions or dreams uh, will involve money, some of them, the capital that you need to start it is not as large as some of them, but obviously we're looking, okay, how can you get money? Can you get like a business startup loan? Can you get um, support from friends and family? Can you just go and get a bank loan directly? What, what, what are the options out there for you? It is doable. Obviously you have to start from somewhere. Not every, you can't start big, start small and grow and see your, yourself growing from strength to strength. None of us have started big, we started somewhere um, even if you look at Tesco's or anybody else, they've started small and you then grow. So it is doable. And then obviously the final, um, the final push out of that is then the launch. Then launch your idea, bring it to light, start up the business and let's get going. And then the next uh, item on my agenda was the financial statements. Obviously the preparation is very important. If you have um, a company, you need to be filing your accounts with HMSC, with um, company's house and making sure that you as your director, you're doing your self-assessments every annually to make sure you're staying on the right side of the law. And obviously the other thing I wanted to bring to the forefront of everybody, for those, for instance, because of the impact of I-35, some people will close their um, limited companies but you need to do things properly to make sure you do all your filing because if you just decide you're not going to use it, you're not going to close everything down properly, you're going to get penalties. Uh, HMRC will penalize you for late filing. Um, companies uh, have. Uh, have a nice terror of something, she, financial planning. What was I the think Edith, you need to mute yourself. Uh, let me see, can I? Yeah, she's gone. She's, she's gone. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so obviously, my advice is yes, you had a limited company, well and fine, you don't need to use it now, but just like when you opened it, right? You took time to invest, to understand how things work, take the time, invest time to close down things properly so that there are no penalties because those penalties will need to be paid, All right? And obviously a reminder is what Tendai said at the start, most people got the help from the government because of the coronavirus. I have to say, we very, um, most of us should be very grateful for the government and the support that they gave because not every person in this world received the support. I know people might say it wasn't good enough, but every little helps as Tesco says. Um, but obviously the self-employed people with the limited companies, most of them got uh, like self-employed grants, but obviously those grants need to be declared when you do your self-assessment for 2020 in 2022. 
uh, in January, you need to declare those because they're, they're liable to tax an NI based on your, um, your, your rates. So you have to declare them because if you don't declare them, then you're going to be in trouble again with the taxman. You're only paying tax on them and you're only paying NI, self-employed NI on them. You're not paying the total amount. So it's only the tax and the NI. So you need to remember to include them on your declaration when you submit your self-assessment in January, 2022. As well, for those that received the bonds back loans, you might want to close the company well and fine, but if you're closing the company, that means companies also notify the bank and the, the bank account will be closed. But you need to make sure you, that you have discussion to the bank to say, I had a, a bounce back loan that I took. And obviously because of the change in circumstances, I have to close the limited company and make arrangements on how to pay. So I guess um, that's all I had for today. Um, I'll leave more time for questions because I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions. Um, we can open the floor for questions now. Thank you so much, Dawn. That was short, sharp, but impactful. The tax man, you know, the only two things that are certain, death and taxes, <laughs> um, you know, and um, it's accountants like you where we just say, please take it, <laughs> help us. What do we need to do with this? So thank you for that. If you can stop sharing your screen, please. Um, yes. You mentioned something about um, the bounce back uh, loans. Um, with money, it's always nice when you receive it. Um, and some people then have had to close their companies down. So you mentioned you have to arrange to pay it back, but I thought any money that's taken within a company is not my liability, it's the company's liability. So if the company is closed, surely they're not gonna come out after the director, are they, for that money? Well, well, the thing is why I'm saying that is it's good to have the discussion with the bank and explain it because some people are deciding, right? Why I've said that point, and I'm glad you picked up on it, is because some people are closing one company down and then going back and opening another company. But remember, you're still the same person. And obviously, as I said, some people took these monies that they shouldn't have taken because the money that people took was should have been based on their turnover. And it should have only been 25% of their turnover. But most people were because they were not checking the turnover. So you were declaring whatever you wanted to declare. So if you declared, for example, that your turnover was 100,000, you could have taken 25 grand out, right? But obviously you've taken 25 grand out and the company has folded, you decided to close the company and then you're going to open another company to avoid paying that. I don't think that will go down with Mr. Um, Tanak. And they said they have a team that's going to be checking whether whatever people claimed in terms of those bounce back loans was genuine and if they feel that whatever you claimed was not right, obviously the person that made the claim, yes, was the company, but it was the director of the company. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. I would always advise people, yes, it was the company that took it out, but the person that applied for it through the company was the director. And it's always good to do things properly. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Thank you for clarifying that. Because um, on the streets, in the corners, you hear all sorts of stories, isn't it? So to hear from the experts, um, you know, what that actually looks like. I mean, we have um, someone tomorrow who's going to be talking to us about fraud investigation. So that's going to be wonderful. Um, oh, sorry, I need to unmute myself. Um, and, and so also loads of people starting businesses um, and they need to pay taxes but dawn when you initially start a business perhaps you know you're just scrambling on your feet um do you have to state straight away that you're self-employed um and how soon do you have to start paying tax on it so once you um so the requirement is once you start up a business right and you're going 100 percent self-employed you should be registering for self-assessment so you do you uh, then filing with hmrc every single year in january so that's done a year in arrears mm -hmm. so as soon as you register your company then you, it's best to then register as self-employed and get yourself set up on the self-assessment side of things wonderful okay does anybody else have any questions um you can Inbox me privately if you don't want me, <laughs> if you don't want your person, your question out there, uh, if you want it a bit more anonymous. Um, let's see. That's fine. Okay. So thank you so much, um, Dawn. That was amazing. Okay. I think someone's just, yes. What if the company is not operating at some point? How does that work? 
when they say when the company is not operating at some point, is it the company operated and then stopped or was it not operating completely and they want to restart it again? Can they clarify on that question, please? If you start, a, um, so I guess um, maybe yeah. you yes. operate and then you have a year like last year where business was dry. <laughs> so it you would still need to file, but your profits were just less, isn't it? You just yes. didn't have a, a good turnover. And um, so you would still file. Um, because but, what happens is in terms of um, the filing, companies have to respect it, whether the company traded or not. Uh, if you still want to have your company listed on as a company on company's house, you still need to do a new return filing with them. So you still need to file. HMRC before we're not concerned, you could just call them and say the company's dormant, but now they still require you to do so as a new return filing as well. So you still need to file on both sides. Mm -hmm. Somebody's asked that if you start a business but are still working, do you still register as self-employed? Um, you still need to register. Uh, for self-assessment because it, they need to declare the income on both sides. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about property here. So one of the big changes that happened um, is the tax rules for property investors um, were quite significant a few years ago. Um, I know a lot of people who maybe changed their second home a few years ago um, and, and are thinking, okay, what are the tax implications? Do you help with that as well? Filing such uh, self-assessments for, for people who are property investors? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do that on the, yeah, the self-assessment side. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And is this um, the same for um, companies open for children's hobbies? When do you register such businesses and how does taxation work for these businesses? Great question, Kuzi. For the children's hobbies, uh, class, it, that's more or less is it like for the community because obviously the difference is because some of them might just be community-based ones, so they're more or less like treated like a charity. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope that answers your question. And then someone else asks, um, what are the what about people on benefits but want to do seasonal work like florists? Can they open companies too? I guess one of the things um, you can you can just quickly explain to us, what is the threshold? When is tax due? So let's say I'm a 10 year old and I make a million pounds. Um, <laughs> does the tax man want some money from me? If yes, if you're yes, obviously you're making a million, right? The tax man always wants something or, from you. Or 20,000, whatever, you know, <laughs> when does it, when, so I think that probably was the question that they wanted to ask. So obviously as an individual, if I start on an individual basis, if you're earning over the, uh, threshold of 12,570 for this year, 2021, 2022, then you need to start paying tax on that. Obviously that 12,570 is over the threshold for the NI. So you're still able to pay a little bit of NI on it. So for instance, if anybody earned just the 12,570, they wouldn't pay any tax. They wouldn't be liable for tax because that's a tax-free person allowance, but then you would still be liable for a little bit of NI on it. Mm -hmm. And then obviously as a company, in terms of a company, it all depends what your profits are, because obviously they need to pay uh, tax based on the profits and your the corporation tax rate is 19 percent. Wonderful. OK, yeah, like a baking business. Do I register the child's business once she starts baking straight away? So baking business, you could treat that as self-employed, but obviously the child is under the age of 18. So self-assessment won't be applicable to them because if you're self-employed, you don't need to file any accounts. It's more or less doing the uh, self-assessment. So they won't qualify for it because they're under the age. Okay. And then um, someone asked investments are oh, wonderful. Don't worry, we're coming there. Our next speaker is going to touch upon investments. So um, we're okay. And uh, someone missed a question. They said, sorry, I missed the last bit. Did you say any grant given to self-employed individuals during COVID have to be taxed and declared during this April 2021-22 tax year? So they were declared as part of the 2020-2021 um self-assessment filing period because we always file again in arrears so what we're filing for would be then so you have to declare that yes it has to be declared because you have to pay tax and ni on it you're not paying the gross that you got you're paying um the tax and the ni based on your tax rate so if you're a basic taxpayer you pay 20 percent on it plus ni contributions for the for it 
or if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you're paying 40% on whatever you received plus your NI on it. Wonderful. So you uh, have to remember to declare it because I know most people thought, oh, they just got it and that's the end of it. Yes, it was last year. It seems like a long time ago, but you still need to declare it because they could penalize you for not um, for misrepresenting or misdeclaring because you're not including things that you should have. Thank you. So, um, you know, Dawn is available. Um, she's actually given us part of our upgrade bundles, discounts on her services, accounting services. So if you started a business this year and uh, you're thinking, where do I go? You can, um, you know, benefit from that. And I know once she comes off here, she's going to put her contact details in, in the, um, I think, did you put them on the screen? Yeah. I have that. them on the screen. I could put the screen back if you let me share for a minute. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about it. You can put them in the chat. They'll get that as well. But I will, I have the, the booklets you guys got um, for, I, I realize people don't read. They just say, okay, fine. But the booklet had the program in it and her contact details are in there as well. So, um, and you can always reach out to me if you want to get in touch with her. Um, so that's, that's wonderful. Um, someone says um, people on seasonal work, uh, people on benefits, but want to do seasonal work like florists. Can they open companies too? So when do you open a company and when do you just operate as a sole trader? Well, that's a decision that one has to make. So people might decide to trade to trade as a sole trader, but a sole trader, all your profits are taxed at 20%, mm -hmm. everything that you make. And then if you go limited, if you go limited company, then obviously you tax at 19% on the profits of the company and you then tax as an individual, as a director of the company. So it's a decision that you have to make whether you want to go self-employed or limited company. But since everybody on here is upgrading, we're going to be having high turnovers and things. So we need to consider that and possibly speak to Dawn as well, because whatever the budget announcement is, I know that um, tax for corporates is going to go up. Um, is it next tax year or the tax year yeah. after? I think it's next tax year. But obviously, if you're making less than, I think you said 500,000, <laughs> isn't it? You, you won't be impacted there won't be a change you set in your 19 percent but if you go over the, that threshold then you're talking about high like 25 23 so yeah that's awesome thank you so much for that dawn um that was really informative thank you so much for for those